Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to another movie classroom from Every Movie Has a Lesson. dot com. My name is Don Shaney, and I write the movie reviews for Every Movie Has a Lesson. I'm an educator, and I think of movies with life lessons in mind because, in my opinion, every movie can teach a lesson. Uh, today, I've got a, a, very, a good movie classroom for you. At least I hope I do as we move forward. Um, it's for the best movie I've seen so far this year, and that is Richard Linklater's Boyhood. Um, it's playing limited release now. I hope it gets a very much of a wider release because it is really something special. I'd like to tell you more about it. Stay tuned. Okay, folks. Here it is, and I hope you've been hearing about this movie. Um, it is quite a unique thing. Um, it is Boyhood. I'm just going to tell you right now. Let's just cut all the fuss here. This is 5 out of 5. Uh, this is... Um, it's rocketed to the top of my list as the best movie so far in 2014. It knocks out the Grand Budapest Hotel from the number one spot. It's one of the few movies I've given five-star reviews to this year. Um, this is really something special. Um, for the, I'll try to kind of tell it as best I can here in, in a brief time. Um, this is a unique kind of coming of age and slice of life kind of movie that um, is meant to kind of be a little bit of a tapestry to kind of uh, go through uh, um, one kid's growing up. Um, Richard Linklater started this film in 2002 and got the, kind of the same principal cast to come back a few weeks every summer for 12 straight years to piece together um, kind of the snippets and guidances of a movie where you see a child age from age 6 to 18, and it's played by the same actor the entire time, a young man by the name of L.R. Coltrane. And um, his father is Ethan Hawke, his mother is Patricia Arquette, and his big sister is Lorelai Linkletter, the daughter of the director uh, himself. And um, they are this um, divorced Texas family where the kids stay with mom and dad visits every other weekend and a few times in the summer. And we get to see how that path through life just changes and evolves with time. Um, this isn't like your typical movie where you need flashbacks and uh, younger actors to play uh, versions of adults. We get to see this same kid grow and change and evolve and um, mature through um, a nearly three-hour movie that kind of... Doesn't, and it does it in a very non-traditional way. Um, there's no musical score here. There's no um, title cards to kind of tell you what year you're at. You know, the transitions kind of blend, um, and the and the mo movie just continues to kind of move at a, at the pace that it does. Um, what makes this movie, and I say it in my review, and please, if you get a chance, go to everymoviehasalesson.com. My full review spells all of this out far better than I can. But um, what I say the most about this film is that what makes this movie really something extraordinary is the power of what it does that's opposite to that adjective, and that's the ordinary. Um, this is a movie where the the things that happen in the kid's life aren't these cliched movie moments of, oh, we're going to get to watch his first kiss, or we're going to watch him ride his bike, or little things that we come to expect with a growing up story. We see, you know, visitations and episodes between broken homes and parents. We get to see uh, interactions with friends and bullying and sisters and, and just little things um, that are either very public or very introspective and private. And it's that unique blend of a little bit of everything where you end up kind of really getting to know this kid. That by the time uh, he ages and becomes a young man on his way to college, because uh, that's the last day we see is the, his first day of college, we really do feel like, and, and it's, an, it's amazing that we do so, um, in three hours we really feel like we just watched somebody grow up um, in such an abbreviated yet powerful way. Um, it's a fascinating movie to be able to pull that off, um, like I said, in a very ordinary and, and approachable way. Um, the emotion is very good. Uh, the rawness is there. Great acting that puts these people together. Um, what's interesting a lot about it is that... Um, the script wasn't exactly kind of a firm thing. The four characters kind of wrote this movie as they went to kind of address not only the changes in themselves, but the changes in the world around them. You know, um, think about what has happened in our society since 2002 all the way up to 2014 um, and how the different things have kind of uh, shaped what youth have become or even what us adults have been as parents along the way. Um, by doing so, it, it's... I, I know the realism level is just amazing and off the chart. Um, this isn't something that's just flashbacks and monologues. It's a it's a really interesting, genuine, and and inter um, I said interesting already. Um, a very powerful portrait of, of growing up. Something that um, 
I can't really compare with other movies I've seen. Um, I think the next closest experience where you feel like there's a passage of time that matters and and and, and reverberates a little bit maybe would be the, the Place Beyond the Pines um, two years ago with Ryan Gosling's character. But even then. That whole fathers and sons three arc story there was very deliberate in where it wanted to say and go. This movie f just flows because it covers just an uh, you know sixteen years of time. You know, I, I not sixteen, twelve years of time, and um, in doing so, it just it's yeah, it's just it's a life experience. It's it's a quintessentially kind of American film, a Texas film. Um, the way this movie really it, it may start out slow, but what it does is. Um, we see this kid and his observations and where it goes, but as he grows up to speak more, to expound more, to tell more, and to be more, the movie then also speaks more and expounds more and, and, and talks about more. Um, by the time we, like I said, by the time we meet him as a young teen, as an older teenager, um, he becomes to be the guy that tells his life story, not just the things we see happen around him as a kid. Um, and that shift of importance just really nails where this film is going. Uh, it's extraordinary. It's one of the best movie I've seen so far this year. Um, I know it's not quite Oscar season where I know other good things are coming, but this, this movie is something special. It's something I highly recommend. Uh, let's get to the lessons. Alright, I'll warn you folks, this movie is, because it's a long movie and something kind of substantial, a lot of times when that happens I make a lot of lessons. Um, this one has five lessons, so bear with me. Um, like I said, my full review spells this out. I'll do what I can to make these kind of quick because this is kind of a, a short and abbreviated kind of thing here. Um, I nor like, kind of sidebar here a little bit. I normally don't take notes when I go see a movie. I watch them kind of raw. I let them kind of percolate, and I do my best to remember the things I remember. But um, I knew going into this one because of its length and because of where it was going to go that I might need to bring a post-it note or pad of paper, and I end up filling three post-it notes of stuff. So, um, it's rare that I write, that I kind of take notes, so that's kind of where some of these lessons end up come from. So, let's hop to this here. Lesson number one is simply, uh, children that are products of divorce. Uh, we have a pair of kids um, and a pair of parents here that are going through a divorce, and um, we because this is a movie that is done through the child's point of view, we, and it, it's still a movie, very true, but um, we see how that uh, inevitably will shape um, uh, shape where they go and where they develop and, and how they turn out in terms of personality. Um, some of those things that we see of the aftershocks of divorce are there. Um, the awkward visitations, the, the moving around from house to house, the new boyfriends, the stepfathers, the, the changes of father figures and mother figures, the trust issues, the favoritism that sways between the two parents. Um, and those different influences all show up in terms of how this family, we meet them uh, when they're broken and how we see, even after 12 years of the event, it may heal, but it definitely never goes away. There's definitely um, a lack of completeness that remains. Um, and I think um, you ask kids of, of, that are from divorce, I think you see a lot of that. So um, I think that is definitely not uncommon. Let's have to listen to. Lesson number two kind of plays in the realm of what I'm used to as a school teacher, and that is how learning evolves through childhood. How learning evolves through childhood. And what I mean by this is that by watching a kid uh, and seeing their interests change, um, seeing their their the fads and the times change. Um, in a movie like this, we're watching uh, how a kid kind of learns and grows up. So let me kind of clean up where I messed up some handwriting here. There we go. Looking for blue. Aha! I don't know if that's much better. You're keeping with it. Um, yeah, what you see is um, kind of that idea that we see a kid who's very much of a video game player when he's a kid, and he turns into a photographer as an adult. How, you know, just the things we know um, that maybe those mom blogs out there, those websites that help us parent are out there that tell us, you know, how we can get our kids to be well-rounded people or good readers or lifelong learners. We, you know, um, all those things kind of show up in little snippets and different versions here with, um, with our guy Mason, who's the character's name here, and... Um, each of those things kind of come true, and we get to see kind of a little microcosm of that. Let's hop to lesson three. Lesson number three is a little bit longer, so give me a second here. How a child, I should say how a child, 
ownership, how a child's relationship with their parents. Ooh, ugly, ugly, ugly. All right, with their parents change over time. Something tells me my old English teacher, if she were to watch this, would just be <laughs> killing me with my handwriting, but you try writing on an iPad with a stylus. So, all right, where we're going with this is um, this film spans the time of bedtime stories as a kindergartner through emptiness packing for college. Um, especially in the setting of divorce, we see how um, both the son and the daughter kind of either how their relationship with both their mother and their father, or even some of their stepfathers, because uh, Patricia Arquette's character ends up remarrying twice, in fact, um, how that changes over time, how even though Ethan Hawke has to be kind of the visitation father, how he still matters, how those kids still look at him and how they look towards him, um, and where that advice kind of comes along the way, where the advice given to an 8-year-old changes in terms of the advice maybe given to an 18-year-old 10 years later in the movie, um, and how that is just a fascinating thing to see on display. Lesson four. This lesson is where the cinematic kind of part takes over. Um, we are easily watching very much the classic coming of age tale in just a very unique kind of setting and way. Um, this movie, obviously, with its way of uh, filmmaking, of you know, taking a little piece of every year for 12 years with the same performers, um, we're going to see coming of age things. We see a man, be you know, a boy become a man. We see that maturity that kind of begins to crop up, and where those roots of that maturity come from. And I think that's where this story um, shows the the idea of time coming into play with the coming of age tale. I think other coming of age movies where maybe we see that that one great summer you know, kind of movie that, that gets a kid on its way, whether it's something like Stand By Me or The Way, Way Back, uh, these great coming-of-age movies, it's normally um, a, a small amount of time. It's not something that we see the roots of that lead to either the awkwardness or maturity or the conquering of both. Um, this movie gives you much more of a long-form version of that. Um, the story, even though it's longer and different, fits a lot, a lot of that template and has kind of those wrinkles to storytelling. And that's definitely... Um, a piece of what makes Boyhood still a film. This last lesson, I think, is the one that seals the deal. Um, I do my best every single time to do these kinds of things with the lessons and where I write my page to be spoiler-free. And I don't want to tell you how this kid grows up, but um, I think the biggest lesson, especially because this is still a very visual thing as a film, is the idea of what young eyes and ears can observe. What young eyes and ears can observe. Um, and we see this, especially in the earlier chapters, the idea of what, what a kid witnesses and sees, you know, um, kids do see their parents arguing, kids can pick up on more things than we give them credit for, this whole film is Mason's view of the world, we see the good and the bad and the ugly and how that changes along the way, what impression that makes on this kid's understanding and his maturity, um, I say in my review this goes beyond the whole, you know, earmuffs trick from old school with Vince Vaughn. The um, our, the kids kids do pick up on more things than we realize. Um, they can sense and see stress, anguish, and irregularity. They know when something is wrong. They can see, they can see through lies at some point. They can grow to be mature enough to catch that. They they see when sh things are sugar coated and when, you know, the idea of oh everything's okay when it's really not okay. I think um young kids especially that works for a while but as they grow up um the gap that exists is whether they can fully interpret the why behind the what of what they're observing most kids see what they're observing but they don't know why um as they grow older they start to kind of either craft their idea of why or or, or kind of paint the picture of an idea of why or they get old enough to the point where that's that's the maturity where they understand the why um, because this is, you know, a situation of divorce and some complicated parents and family issues, um, that understanding of why, uh, you know, kind of strengthens, 
uh, with the way this character blossoms and grows. And, and you see that a kid um, that grows up in this setting and sees the things he sees. And, it's, and like I said, this isn't a Lifetime movie. This isn't Hollywood stuff where it's shock value of, you know, knockdown, drag out fights and crazy things like that. This isn't, like I said, it, this stresses the ordinary. We see how the ordinary things that can be observed um, from the most beautiful things to the most painful things um, are still interpreted a different way by children. I think that's the most fascinating thing about this movie. All right, let's close this up. Uh, once again, Boyhood is easily uh, the best movie I've seen so far this year. Go out and see it immediately. I know it's playing in limited release, but if you can find it or catch it when it comes to your town, I highly recommend it. Um, I'll be the guy that says it. It's not the movie for everyone. Um, I think it is um, universal enough that I think you can wrap your head around it. I know it's long, where it's not going to be something that interests everyone. Um, people that aren't, you know, the biggest fans of divorce, or probably maybe see this movie a different way, or wonder why this kid is the way they are. Um, I know this movie isn't subtitled How to Build a Millennial, and it's definitely not that. We see what it's nice to know that um, even in a even in, even when crafted into a movie, we can see a well-rounded, uh, uh, good kid come out of this, and. Um, this movie, I you know, it, and again, the cliches aren't there. This doesn't crescendo into a happy ending. It crescendos into a uh, a place to take the next step. Um, the characters talk about uh, living in the moment, and then sometimes it's the moment that seizes them, not the other way around. And I think that's the the life view of this movie, and it, it's a fascinating one to watch. Like I said, folks, this is a good one. This is one something special. Go find it. Boyhood in theaters soon.